Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Well, the uh, Academy of Community Radio has invited us back for a second week. This is an audience of one, Andrew and Dick, or as Dick likes to call it, shower thoughts. Yeah, personal shower thoughts. So, full disclosure here to the audience, we, we did have our first radio spat off the air. He's desperately trying to change the name of the show to shower thoughts. No. No? Names don't matter to me. Okay. Well, <clears throat> just in case you did, I, I actually have a shower thought for you. Okay. Yeah, but maybe not in the, the sense that you think of, but I, uh, I, I traveled for, for work last week. I went to um, Colorado. You ever been to Colorado? Yeah. My brother used to live there. He used to be a rancher up there. Oh, it's nice. I, I think there's a certain percentage of Texans that are just kind of obsessed with Colorado. I think it's. I think it might be the the mountains, obviously, and the the snow, the weather, and it's not. It's western, but it's not quite California, right? So you don't have to make that full West Coast commitment. I mean, is it the closest state that has consistent snow for skiing, besides New Mexico? Because New Mexico is kind of iffy. Yeah, with you have its to be in the snow. northern part. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like Texans have this thing for for Colorado. I know when I was younger, I, I kind of did. I wanted to go to college there. Loved it. Anyways, I traveled to, to uh, Colorado, and I stayed at a hotel, as one will do yeah. when they're traveling. Oh, you, didn't, you don't do the Airbnb where you randomly stay at some dude's I, house? No, this was a work trip, so they've got that all planned okay. out. You ever, you ever stayed at a hotel before, Dick? Yeah. Okay, good. That's important for this story, too, I think. Um, and I stayed at a hotel that wasn't particularly nice, but it wasn't trash either. So was it was like kind Quality of, Inn or something? <clears throat> well, I'm not going to name any names, but you know, it was just sort of middle of the road. And uh, one of the first things I noticed, though was the, the shower situation. Uh, you know, most hotels now, um, they've got like walk-in showers with like a glass enclosure. Oh, what know. kind of hotel is that? I've always said the ones <clears throat> that, you know, they have years of caked skin <laughs> on, the, on the ground. And no, then, well, well, then this might be one that yeah. you're familiar with. This, uh, this one had the old school tub, you know, with, with, the, with the shower curtain. And uh, with the rod that basically goes straight. In fact, the rod didn't go straight across. It was kind of bowed out for whatever reason. But the first thing I noticed was the shower curtain was not really made of a material that was probably supposed to get wet. Okay. Okay. So I, I thought, So it's missing strange. the liner. Exactly. And I noticed yeah. right in the middle of the curtain, it had these snaps where you could probably put a liner in. Okay. But apparently that was an expense this place was just not willing to burden. Yeah. And so then I thought, well, okay, what's the play here? Do I leave the curtain out of the tub and just have water go all over the bathroom floor? Or do I tuck it into the shower like a liner would, even though it's a made of a material that's... Like a cloth? Yeah, it was like a yeah. polyester blend of some sort. I didn't know what the play was there. You just call. Wait, call the front desk? Ask yeah. what I'm supposed to do with a shower curtain? Well, like, hey, do you have a liner? This one doesn't <clears> have a liner. Yeah, I guess I could have. I didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, they always do that. Because there's, there's times where I've been to a, a hotel or a motel and they don't have any toilet paper. You know, and it's because they just forgot to put it on the ring or whatever. And you're like, okay, well. I'm I think in that case, I'm calling for toilet yeah. paper. I don't know that I'm going to call about a shower curtain yeah, or liner. Would, just because you don't want to screw it all up. Especially if you're staying. How long are you staying there? Uh, Two nights. Three okay. days, two nights. Yeah, or you could just be. A mean person just not call and just get water everywhere. And well, so see, that's what I'm saying. So, what would you have done in my in my uh, spot, in my position? What would you have done? Uh, I would call. Okay, let's assume that you can't call. Let's say you got. Oh, you know, you, you called and they said, "No, we're out of liners." Again, this is not an expense we're willing to. Oh, uh, if, if you're asking if I would have yeah, would tucked you, it in, yeah. or I mean, to be honest, I probably depending on how many towels they give you. Because that's always been another issue with certain right. motels where, like, oh, we only give you one towel a day right. per person staying there or something. Like they, I've literally had that conversation. And so I probably would just tucked it in and just gone with it, like, 
not my fault. Right. Well, I, that's what I did. I, I I did the tuck, and I felt a little bad because it was. I mean, it was not really meant to get wet, but at the same time, otherwise, I'm just going to drown that thing. Yeah. I'm on the second floor. You know, you don't want to risk leaks or anything. But so I wasn't sure exactly what to do, but I Loose, tucked it in. Yeah, or take a bath. Oh no! I don't know that I would take a bath in a hotel. Oh, no. I don't. I don't, I don't think that oh, yeah. they clean those things well enough to take a bath in. That's kind of gross. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I agree. Like I said, you you go to the good ones that have the. It's been used so much, you can see like the layers of things that have been caked in. So nasty. But so nasty. Well, that that was my actual shower thought. I thought you'd be pleased that I would I bring like that it. to air. I yes. like it because yeah. I, you know, one of my fair things about going to those motels is there's always something up. You know, like, oh, the pressure's really bad, or they clearly had a maintenance guy that replaced one of the shower heads with, like, you know, an incompatible shower head, yeah. so it leaks from behind it. And then you always, you ever been to the motels where they had the old school uh, dry cleaning lines in the shower? <laughs> no, I don't think I have. You ever seen that? Like, it's like a little silver hole, and it had, like, you pull a piece of wire across and it hooks so that where you can dry your clothes no i understand conceptually what you're saying but i don't think i've ever seen yeah. one of those at a hotel well like you know you have wow. those but then they remove them but they don't remove them completely so you have this bare hole oh, i would think something is up if i saw yeah. a hole like that in, in the shower that's odd yeah I know, you, the only clothes lines i remember are the ones when i was a kid playing in the backyard and those things would close yeah well, it's, the same, it's the same <laughs> same idea it's playing like, football and someone loses a head oh my god but uh i think they got rid of them because people kill themselves or something i don't really know Oh, but that, that's think about or that. is that urban legend? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know why else would you get rid of them. Well, Unless, because most people aren't. Well, people I, would. I, I imagine they would. They, would. they wanted to dry their clothes or something. I don't. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, usually when you go into those bathrooms, there's always something up. <laughs> you know. Well, what was up in this in this case is I had no liner, so. Yeah, that, that yeah, didn't surprise me though, because I mean, think about the extra effort they have to put into that, <laughs> and I guess the cost too. Yeah. Again, like I said, this wasn't necessarily a super nice hotel. It wasn't terrible either. But Do you think hotel staying is one of those absent-minded things we have to force ourselves into because of you know exactly this hotel's been here for a long time? And like, Don't you get a little worried if you find someone's pair of socks or something, something, something <laughs> like that? You're like, do they clean this room? Is this like the, I mean, we don't even know. I found some other people's stuff. So, yeah, uh, yeah, you're always a little suspect if you find the, the previous person. Oh, I hate it when you open up the refrigerator and you'll find like a sandwich that was left yeah. over from before. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, oh, it's like, okay, that's nasty. So clearly someone else has stayed in this room, but you should know that. Yeah, you, you, you do kind of have to put yourself in a mindset that I'm the only one who's ever stayed here before. Yeah. Because if you think about all the hundreds of thousands of people, not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds I mean, or thousands of people. I mean, it could be. It depends how old the hotel is. Yeah, it's just kind of gross. Yeah. Anyways. But you're back. You're safe. I, I am back. It's safe. Uh, when I got there, it was like 40 degrees. By the time I left, it was two. Snowed practically the entire time That's I was fun. there. That was nice, but made for some interesting driving around, too. But anyways. Well, I thought we'd start off this week with a few stories of people kind of doing some bad things. Okay. Yeah. Using a shower liner? Not using a shower <laughs> liner is one of those things. Well, you just said you would have done the same thing I yeah, did. Yeah, I'm How a bad, bad person. Oh, okay. that's true. That's true. No, this story that I kind of caught my eye this week, um, yeah, there's not, not a lot here, but um, this is a story about a man named Jose Luis Diaz. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the other name that was in there, but who, Jose Luis Diaz. And he attempted to escape from Concho Corro. You like the way I say that? Yeah. Yeah, which is a maximum security prison in Bolivia. And you would probably say, okay, well, probably lots of people make attempts at escaping a, a prison in Bolivia. But um, he did it in a fairly interesting way. <laughs> and it made me laugh. He wrapped himself up in sheepskin <laughs> and crawled through the grassland surrounding the jail. Okay. Yeah, and so it says this, this inmate, also known as El Araña, used his fleece coat to sneak past security. So apparently it was good enough to sneak past security and break through one of the uh, prison's external walls. Um, I don't know if you can pull that up. Yeah, I got I'm going to show the audience right now. This is what this is what made me laugh. They're seeing it. That's him on the ground. I guess that's when they caught him. <laughs> yeah, I, it's so funny because, yeah, that uh, it looks like just a cheap coat that you would have you know purchased at, I don't know, Walmart or something like that. No, I mean, it, it, there's a picture right here. <laughs> Well, I think that, that one legit? is probably after after he had crawled. Yeah, but it. that looks like an actual sheepskin. 
Yeah, it does. But that first picture with him crawling when it's on his back, it, it does appear to look coat-like. I'm not sure. Where do you get a se- sheepskin? Who's who's sneaking in a sheepskin into your prison? Well, I mean, you're in Bolivia, right? I guess they got him wandering in around. There. I don't know. That's probably what his concept was. It was like, <laughs> hey, there's sheep everywhere around the jail. I could probably sneak out. It did say grassland surrounding, so maybe there were sheep yeah. around and he thought I'd blend in. Oh, I don't know. I, when I saw that, I just I had to laugh out loud. Well, you also think about the desperation of people breaking out of jail, and it's like, what can really be successful and what isn't? Because I imagine there's probably more successes out there that we know of or we don't know of because they don't want to report like people are. Oh, true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Because you know, you always have those cool movies where they break out of prison. Well, yeah. So how how would you break out if 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 you were an inmate? Well, it depends on what, see, how do you think you would break out. Do you think you would go like El Chapo, um, dig Count, a tunnel. Of, Count of Monte Cristo style, and dig a tunnel, or would you go sheepskin? I mean, I think it's also where you're in prison because El Chapo had the money. To well, he do, had probably to, other people digging to holes all for the bribery, him, right? like so. the bribing and things. But this guy, I bet you, this guy saw that the, there was a sheep herder that travels around, and he's like, okay, so we know there's sheep. If I just get a sheepskin and I just get out the walls. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? And yeah, I mean, there's. I think that's. I think that's ingenious. I think that's something. Well, that, it's not uh, too ingenious. He he did get caught, but he did make it past the first level of yeah. security. Apparently, with that so, awesome disguise of yeah. his, or probably someone ratted on him. No, no, oh, and, maybe. Yeah, maybe. No, I don't know how I would escape. Wasn't there a, a guy, an escaped convict? Um, here in Conroe. Oh, about, he killed people. About two years ago, right? Yeah, he killed, he he killed a family. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he escaped like at 105 at the McDonald's right here at 105 yeah. or 45, right? I didn't realize that he had killed anyone. Well, it might be a different. I know. I don't think this. No, 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 no. I know. Because there was a about. story that, you know, Huntsville, if people don't know, Huntsville has a huge mm-hmm. Texas state penetra- uh, penitentiary. I know the story you're talking about. That's not what I'm And he escaped. To. I don't know how. I think he actually, like, forced his escape. Yeah. And then he was on the run for several times and he hid in that a family's terrible. house and he yeah. killed the family and. And, uh, no, this guy, They apparently they were transporting some, some prisoners from some other location, and they stopped at McDonald's for lunch. I can see that. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if they were actually feeding the inmates lunch. It's been a few years. Or if just the driver said, mm, I need to hit something up from the dollar menu. I need to get me some nugs or something. I don't know. But apparently the guy decided to make a run for it then. I, I remember this. It was right here on 105. Yeah. Um, I don't think he, he went very far. But that probably would be the way I would do it. I would I would wait to you know transport time, yeah, and then just wait for the the, the hunger pangs to to kick in. They pull over, and I'm going to make a run for it. I was going to do sheepskin, but when I saw this guy got caught, I went, "Well, I got to go to Plan B." Well, if you look at actual prison breaks compared to the movies, you know the actual ones. There is a thought, like there's there's thought process into it. It's not just one day, like, oh, the guards looking the other way, I can go through this door. But yeah, I maybe. imagine that there's some some of them are that simple, where it's just like. Well, this one is pretty simple. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, he just got unlucky because one guard yeah. would happen to be there and see like, what's that sheep with legs doing, <laughs> with human legs doing out there? And maybe this is what was uh, afforded to him, right? Like this is the the resources that he had available to him at that time. Yeah, you're in Bolivia, dude. Yeah, sheepskin all over, I guess. Yeah. maybe. I don't know. Well, one thing I do want to let the audience know, I I am recovering from a. From a cold, so if I sound different than our last show, yeah. that is why. Yeah, well, you're. Uh, I was worried about you. It was a little touch and go there for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a real weakling when it comes to getting <laughs> colds. I'm like, I can't even move. Uh, but also, it's really bad for radio to be, have a cold because you really don't want to be infectious in an area where people are coming and talking. So I was out. I was out for a couple of days. I was like, I'm just not going to chance it. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad you're better now. Yeah. I'm at the like the end of the race where I'm no fever, nothing, but I just sound like crap. I, to be honest, I don't think you sound that much. It's a little yeah, stuffy. I feel it. But so okay, well, there's enough distance in between you and I. We're, we're socially distanced here. Yeah. I think we're all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think last week, continuing on our theme of, of people doing bad things, uh, last week I mentioned to you off air if this uh, scenario had ever unfolded to you, and you said that it had not. And I, it kind of surprised me, actually. I thought it was fairly fairly common around here. And what I'm referring to is the, the grocery store or shopping center violin player. Yeah, and this doesn't even ring a bell with you, which, which surprised me. So uh, this probably a couple of years ago, maybe right after the pandemic, I guess, so maybe a year, year and a half ago, yeah. I first experienced this. And it's one of these things where I, I pull up to the, to the grocery store, 
uh, they're in the woodlands. And open, the second I open my car door, I'm just greeted with very loud violin music. And it's good. It's got some a backtrack and some beat to it. And it's it, it, what's what the first thing that that struck me was it was not classic violin music as much as it was pop songs, All right? So you had like Bruno Mars or something, and you're like, hey, I recognize that song, and it's beautiful. Like it sounded great. And I thought, wow, that's that's enough for me to kind of stop and look, go in, get my groceries, come back out, and they're playing Ed Sheeran. I'm like, man, this is great. A few days later, I got to go to the grocery store again. I I'll be darned. There's a guy still playing. In fact, it's a different guy. And I get out, man, he's playing the same type of song, pop music. I'm like, That's strange. A week later, I have to go to the grocery store. I go to a different location. And what do you know? There's a violin player. Yeah. And they're playing the exact same music. And it all sounds kind of the same. And I thought, wait a minute. Something, something is not right here. And so I looked it up. And the only reason I bring this up is because I ran across one of these people just last week, and I went, oh, man, I hadn't seen one of these in a, in a while. Um, so I looked it up, and apparently um, this is not new. This has been a phenomenon that's been sweeping across the United States, and it kind of made its way into Texas a few years ago. Police are calling this a nationwide emergency in involving violins. I believe it. <laughs> which is hilarious. Now, what this is, apparently, these are scammers, and uh, they're posing as people that are actually playing the violin, but they ain't playing the violin. It's, okay. all, it's all recorded. All right. And they're getting out there and they're playing, and a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, they'll turn their back, so you can't quite see their, fi their fingers or whatever. And in this case of this one woman that I saw at Kroger, she was dancing. Mm, and she'd dance and dance and dance, and you couldn't ever really get a beat on whether or not you know, she was actually playing. Well, they're just scammers. And they're of course, they're all begging for money. They've got signs out, yeah. donate this, that, and the other. So um, I thought it was interesting that you've never run into this. Yeah, I think it's, it's the new, it's the evolution of, of the scam artist. Well, yeah, maybe so. I, I wasn't that offended by it. Okay, I found out they're fake. It made sense, but it was at least pleasant. I mean, if you're just going to hold a sign out there that says, give me money, yeah, it's yeah. disingenuous, but at least there's some good news. It yeah, was really I guess. Pretty. I don't know how Kroger feels about it. Yeah, well, when, the first time I saw it, this person was right up by the door. And then the next time, they were a considerable distance away, like almost kind of at the edge of the parking lot. Yeah. I bet you Kroger said, you know, you need to get away from, from you'd be X number of feet away from the front door. I can't believe they let them stay there at all. But I guess there's some rules or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I guess if you get far enough away. Uh, I, I think what the funniest part about this is apparently um, – that real violinists, real musicians have gotten pretty upset about this. Oh, great. <laughs> and apparently there's some videos online of, of violinists that are confronting these, these people. Yeah. And they're so offended by it, you know? And they're like, oh, I can't believe that you're out here faking it, bro. And my thought is, yeah, I can, I can, I can see that. But then if it's that offensive, why don't you just grab your violin and go play yourself then and show them up? Yeah, I mean, I well, it's also one of those things. How many people will actually stop by and interact with this? Because if it was me, I wouldn't pay any attention to it. Yeah, I kept walking, but I walked slowly so I could absorb a little bit of the yeah. music. But yeah, I don't care. But I also don't play the violin. If I was a like a a concert yeah, but violinist, it, or maybe not even just someone who played, I, think, I might be a little more interested to go. Oh wow, this guy's pretty good. And when you walk over, you go, wait a minute. Your fingers aren't even. You're you're not even barely. You're not moving the bow in the proper. Yeah, way. but you're so, also not. You're probably not one of those people who immediately go up and give money to somebody. Because um, I, I, have you ever been I'm not to like no. uh, like New Orleans or I mean Houston used to I think Houston has a law that you can't do street tricks or anything like that. But I know like in uh, on what is that Main Street in New Orleans it starts with a B. Oh, Bourbon blank. Street. Bourbon Street. There's a lot of street performers doing different things. Yes. And it's it's very similar to this kind of thing where it's like oh I'm doing this you know, entertaining thing, give me money. And I, I, I don't really like interacting with that. I'm not, I'm not all about that. I'm just wondering if this is against the law because this says you know, the police were warning about it. I'm thinking, well, well, there, I, there's, there's beggars all the time. That's essentially yeah. what they were. What's the difference in fact that they're just being disingenuous? And so I was wondering if this was against the law or not. Well, do you, do you compare this the same as the folks who get in a wheelchair 
and pretend to have like missing legs, and then all of a sudden you see them get in a car or something like. Yeah, I think it's its first cousin. Honestly, yeah. they're related. This one just I get more enjoyment out of. The other one hits you in a different way. You know, oh, it's supposed to elicit yeah. some sort of sadness. This was like, wow, this person's really great, but apparently yeah. not. So uh, apparently like they have though. a name. Though. I wonder why a violin though. Well, that's true. Yeah, how did they decide? I guess on a that's violin? the easiest instrument you can do to fake. Well, I, I bet you the, the percentage a... of people in the population that play violin is probably fairly small, and so they yeah. can get away with it easier than guitar, maybe. Yeah, guitar. I bet people can tell really, fast. really, really quick. Yeah. So apparently, this has a name. It's called finger sinking. I like it. Yeah, I'll let you take that where you want. But I finger like sinking, a term. It's a it's a play on the term lip syncing, obviously. But um, why don't you just get out there with your air guitar, dude? Get some money. It's kind of the same thing, yeah. right? At least I guess in that case, you're not really tricking anyone. I mean, you don't know if they're really playing the guitar in their mind. Oh, that's true, and it's probably beautiful too. Yeah, probably these violin people think they're really playing the violin. Well, this this last guy that I saw, um, I guess it was last week or maybe two weeks ago now, um, he was actually playing. And the reason I know he was playing is because he was not in t exactly in sync with the the track behind him. Yeah. So I think he was trying to pull it off like, look, I can kind of play. And he was off slightly. And I'm like, oh. So maybe he's he was trying to do the real deal. I don't know. But it didn't sound nearly as good as some of the other ones I'd heard. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's it's ingenious. I mean, it kind of – well, you know, it's funny. This makes me – I think a couple weeks ago, Montgomery County – we're in Montgomery County in Texas. And – there was a sheriff's report because we get reports from the sheriff's department, kind of like yeah. recent news to tell people as, as the media. And one of them was the online scams through Facebook groups. And there's common language with it where it's like, oh, hey, my car broke down this weekend. I got to get to my job. Can anyone pick me up or pay for my Uber? And they like they have the system down where they link their Uber account and you can deposit money into it. And it's like the same language as always where it's like if they try to – if you try to offer to him a ride, it always end up being like, oh, I can't do that. I can't – you know, I got three kids. I got to take them. So I don't want – I don't want to put that on you to take them to the – you know, to the doctor and all this kind of stuff. Like help – give me more money to fix my car instead of a ride. Hmm. And so, yeah, they put a warning out there. If you're on Facebook and you see people linking their Venmo account. It seems suspicious to me. No, well, just on, on face value, it just seems. Suspicious. Yeah, I like it, though, because it's like, who really, I wonder how much money they really get. I mean, if you figure just one out of every hundred person that, that reads it's Like, here's a dollar. Here's a dollar, yeah. it adds up. I guess if you just, it's all on the numbers. Yeah. I don't know. Scamming's pretty great these days. It's good money. You ever been approached, like, the at a gas station when you're filling up, and it's always a guy coming yeah. in, oh, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. What is with that? Well, I mean, uh. With that, I'm trying to remember what the old scam was where it was like, oh, hey, can I borrow five bucks? I need to go buy something, and then I'll pay you back. Yeah. You know, you know something. And I'm like, I don't really want to stick around here. Yeah, and I, and I have actually had a lady come up to me in a nice – she was in a Lexus, and it was a newer model Lexus asking for, for a few bucks for gas. Yeah. I thought, man, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with this. I just always tell them no. Yeah. No. Can't do it. It's All not, right. Because you don't like helping people. It's all right. <laughs> That's it. But I did enjoy the violin music. Well, yeah. we we can we can change gears here a little bit. We can go one of two different ways. Okay. You want to go? We we'll do a little celebrity roulette here. Do you want to go Bruce Willis, or do you want to go Alec Baldwin? Well, I guess those are the two. People That's our only two there. choices right now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> both of them been in the news here recently. Um, I figured. I know last week you mentioned. Alec Baldwin, I know you said you, you, you've you uh, followed a little bit on that story. Yeah. I don't know a ton about it, so I know you want to talk about that. And then Bruce Willis made news this week, too. So we can go one of which one. Which one? Eeny, meeny. Well, I mean, you know, the Bruce Willis story, if people don't know, he was <coughs> diagnosed with dementia. And they made the public announcement of it because, you know, what was it, about a year ago, they announced he had some type of recognitive disease where he couldn't remember his lines and aphasia aphasia is that what it is yeah, that's and what then uh, they announced it last spring and then now he has dementia and i'm thinking to myself why are they letting us know this to the point because usually they do the they do an announcement like that because he has a movie coming out and it's kind of like oh hey just you know just to let you know this is what's going on there might be some issues with production you know that kind of thing right but now we're we're getting to the point where with him 
It's like, why do we care? Even though it's like sad, but it's like, what are they trying to protect? Did he do something wrong? And they're going to come out with this, you know, Me Too kind of stuff where he's like, oh, don't worry. That's when he had dementia. I, you understand I, what I'm I, saying? No, I, I'm going I absolutely. With this? I, I think it's kind of strange that I, they want the public to know he has dementia. Where they well, already... I think it's because he's a public figure. And... Is he? Oh yeah, man. I mean, he's been in tons of movies. Yeah, but I mean, like, he's not going out and about and doing stuff. He's not on Twitter or not on, you know, TikTok no. doing stuff, and then all of a sudden he disappears. Well, I, I, I think it's interesting. A few a few months ago, there was the story that he had sold his likeness to an AI company. See, I can see that. And I thought, wow, this is this is brilliant. We, his health is declining. Yeah. And so he's going to get ahead of this for not only himself, but his family and generations behind it. I'm going to yeah. sell my likeness. Uh, it was to a, a company, a deep fake co- company called Deep Cake. I that's, like it. That's an awesome name for a deep They ran cake. out of yeah. names at the... Yeah. Allowing a company to create a digital twin for the actor who retired in, in March following his diagnosis of, uh, diagnosis of aphasia. But yeah. He has... Bruce Willis says, has denied this, saying that's not true. Probably doesn't even remember. <laughs> well, I think his family would remember. But it is kind of an interesting concept if you think about it, selling your likeness to AI. Well, people do it all the time. What's the na- – well, who- they do it all the time. Well, like they sell the rights to something very personal like – A music catalog. Like a music – like, yeah. But so your to face, me, it's not, that's not a big skip. Well, I think it, it's it's more of this is where movies are going to go in the future potentially, and they're going to have AI actors. Well, like right? what I would- so – Hey, why don't we? Why don't I cash in on having one of these actors be familiar to us, and we can make him look, whatever age. Back to a story that we had last week, an age that he wants to be at. Make him look that well, age yeah. in in perpetuity, and he can act for forever. Well, uh, to me, it's all connected to like it's probably I had a discussion with video games, similar to that. Meaning, like, say you're a video game actor. And you're like, all right, well, I'm clearly 20 years later, but they're still making part 17, and they're using my person, my, my likeness to it. But, you know, they that person hasn't aged in the game. Because I remember a while back there was a discussion between MGM and the people who, uh, it was like, I think it was after Goldeneye, where they were trying to figure out, like, okay, so Pierce Brosnan was James Bond, but he stopped being James Bond, right? But they still wanted to make games with Pierce Brosnan's James Bond, like the model. Uh-huh. And I think there was something about that where, like, they, they go, okay, yeah, you can do it only for two years. Like, after... Because they didn't want to ruin the James Bond image. Because if you think about it, they continue making video games with Pierce Brosnan's James Bond today. It's It would kind of confuse the audience in a way. Like, they're branding. So they want to have control over that. But with the Bruce Willis thing, I mean, that's... Well, it sounds like there's some kind of argument because they're saying that, um, of course, this is... Russian advertisement said that they had already used his likeness in a, in a uh, commercial last year. Uh, oh, I don't doubt it. Yes. Yeah, uh, but I think also if you're an actor, you kind of have to look at how to maximize your profit or your earnings. Well, exactly. But and he's if, denying it, which makes me wonder if he's just saying no, but he really has. Well, that's what I'm saying. All this news know. about him, it's really weird. It it's is weird. It, it it's is really odd. weird to me because it's like, is, does he have a movie coming out? Because I would say for the past 10 years, his movies have been mm-hmm. like – C-rate movies, meaning you know they DVD straight to DVD, right. and he just gets collects a paycheck. So it's not like there's a an industry relying on him to keep his brand, to keep keep him yeah. on the up and up. Moonlighting was forty years ago. Yeah, well, I mean, like <laughs> it, no, it happens all the time with actors. I mean, it's like you, if you start this franchise with this person, you're like, all right, we can't, we got to keep this clean. So if we want to do another Die Hard movie, but they're not going to do another Die Hard movie with him. Like that's not even in the works. Yeah. So well, these these deep fake digital twin things are interesting. Did you have you ever seen the um, the Tom Cruise? Yeah, I fell. There's for a it. couple out there. I fell for there's it the a... first time I saw it. I wasn't paying attention. It probably came through my social media. There's feed. one with Bill Gates. Well, this one this one with Tom Cruise it went kind of viral because it was this guy who kind of already looked a little bit yeah. like Tom Cruise. Altered his face, has his mannerisms That's all, down. Uh, the, you know, those are all over TikTok, right? They're, they're, uh, yeah, I don't do TikTok, but that wouldn't surprise like, me. Like, there's one guy who looks like Johnny Depp, so he does, he mimics Q and A's. So he's like on TikTok Live, and he looks like Jack Sparrow. Like, he looks legit like Jack okay, Sparrow. Okay, ha- I may have to check this and out. He then. does cute, like people ask him questions, and he tries to play off that he's well, see, Johnny Depp. Same thing. I mean, I fell for it because I wasn't necessarily paying attention, and I wasn't looking for it. But I see this video of Tom Cruise, and I, I wish I could remember specifically what it was. But I thought, 
it, it was a scenario that didn't quite make sense why he would be doing what he was doing. There's you know? one with Morgan Freeman. And, and I thought, um, this is weird. And as it turns out, there's a whole series of them. And the more I watched them, the more ridiculous they were. Mm-hmm. He was kind of a caricature of himself. And I thought, this is weird. Why Why is Tom Cruise doing these these? Videos? What are they? Pro-? It turns out he was fake. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's really scary. But I mean, if you don't know... Or, or if you're like, say, if you're a political yeah. person, I mean, that's out they can there, put, man. yeah, they can put words in your mouth and, and do whatever. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I like it. Well, I mean, connecting to the Alec Baldwin story about actors and getting in trouble, I, this, this to me, this story is kind of remarkable because you kind of see the the inner workings of the movie industry, where Alec Baldwin is a producer on a film, a western film, and he also stars in it, which is, you know. Probably something he's doing because he can't either get big roles with big production companies, or this might be a passion project. Well, anyway, as the story goes on, uh, unfortunately, a, a young woman was shot on while filming, and it turned out to be that the gun was loaded. I don't believe the gun was loaded with an actual bullet. I think it was a certain type of bullet that the no, movie the movie people make, and it. No, it was it's kind of like the, the crow, kind of like the crow animal. issue. Remember that with the crow? Uh, like he yes. wasn't shot with a bullet. So he was shot with a blank, but the way the blanks are prepared, that they had enough impact. So, so those are. It's, I think it's two separate things. So okay, so the, the 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 crow thing was the 1990s movie with Brandon Lee. Yeah, Bruce who's Lee's the son of Bruce Bruce Lee. Uh, it was a little bit different then. I that actually was a blank, and if I remember this correctly. Um, after you fire blanks, there can be some shrapnel left in the, the barrel of the gun after the blank fires. And what happened in the case of, of Brandon Lee was a shot was fired at him, and it took a piece of the previous shrapnel, yeah. and it acted as a bullet, essentially, and it entered him, and just yeah. like at the same so force this, that a bullet was. So in this scenario, was, without Baldwin, without, it was, it was an actual a, gun. It was an actual gun, so l- live the, ammo. And I think the gun handler on the side <clears throat> got prosecuted, and... Uh, yeah, the, the 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 sets armorer. Yeah, Hannah Hannah Reed. I I didn't know armorer was an actual. Oh yeah, thing. Well, that's, a, to, that's a cool. You have cool to imagine game. when it comes to making a movie, any like any size of a movie. There's so many protocols for yeah. everything. Yeah, and I think with the with this scenario is unfortunate. But then what happened recently is Alec Baldwin now has been charged. He has yeah. for involuntary manslaughter, if I remember correctly. Yes, and but as a producer's role, not as the person pulling the trigger, because it was his production company that because oversaw it oversaw it. Because yeah. a lot of people got confused, where it's like, oh, well, he was the one that pulled the trigger, but he's he's not at fault because he did, wasn't intending to do that. Yeah, I don't think anybody believes that Alec Baldwin actually meant to kill yeah, anybody. But Maybe I there's think, somebody. And I, don't, I think that's why I like the story because it's interesting enough where it's like, okay, so he he was directly involved, but he, the reason he's getting charged is as a producer, not as the person who accidentally killed the person. And but see, this is where I find it kind of weird with the industries. Now they're still making the movie. Yeah, I, well, so I, it's it kind was of on hold the, for a while. I don't know yeah, if but, it's actually, Yeah, it was announced that they're... They're going to restart? They're putting it out there and Is i'm thinking gonna want to see that that's what i'm saying it's, it's such a weird thing where it's like this movie wasn't going to be a big movie anyway low and, budget something like eight million dollars to make yeah and that's low budget in that world so extremely low i don't budget. i it's kind of weird it's like hey do we cut our losses or do we want to try and make some money back we could sell it to amazon well so like in the case of the crow i remember i was in high school when that movie came out yeah. and you know how young kids middle school junior high and high school kids are they're like oh man we got to go see that movie because the scene where Brandon Lee was shot, they left it in. They actually left the at same <laughs> scene in that. there. And I'm like, wow, you know, and I don't know if that's actually the truth, but I remember that was a rumor going around that that scene where he was shot was left in the movie well, for real. You know, it's funny. You know? Speaking of deep fakes and this kind of, you remember when Paul Walker passed away and uh, they, yes, they put I, him I, in the Fast and the Furious, well, I don't know, seven or eight, and it was his brother and they did like a this deep fake. And it was really funny to me because it's like, once you do that, it's like, what do you? Is that the end of that? Like, are they going to try to do it again? Yeah, I don't know. I don't or, keep up with that series. I know there's some people who are crazy about that. Fast but you don't say, but yeah, they legit had him in really? the movie. It was oh, creepy. That, that is weird. And uh, yeah, I, I think one of the the positive things that could come out of this whole Alec Baldwin thing, if if indeed there is anything positive, is there's going to probably be increased safety mechanisms and protocols in place for not only just the actors, but probably also the people who are on set making the movies, directors and things like this. Because obviously in this case, 
mistakes were made. Yeah. I mean, why the heck was there a, a, a live gun there in the first place? You well, know? Be, it'd be interesting to see exactly in, in, in that industry is you looking at oversight, but when you start setting regulations in that industry, it's going to cost more money for the small budget people. So if they just do a flat thing where like everyone has to follow this protocol, it's going to cost them at least a hundred, like $1 million in any movie that has guns in it. And that's why you see. I remember. I forgot what it was. It was I think it was like I was reading the production of Starship Troopers, and one of the arguments was they. If you remember that movie, do you remember that movie? I don't believe I ever saw it. Starship Troopers. Okay. Well, it's like an alien movie, right? Like they're in space, and one of the things they're thinking about doing is instead of having like live ammo guns, because the guns they have are actual guns, and they put in, like make it look all spacey, but it shoots bullets. Okay. And then one of the things like why why do we just cut that out and just make it lasers? So that way we're not firing, like, actual weapons. And I think that's a, a proposition that's been made, is to just eliminate guns altogether from movies and have something else. I don't know how well that's going to Well, it doesn't really fit well in a Western movie. It doesn't fit well in most movies yeah. that involve guns. I mean, well, to I be honest. I mean, to me, it's like... If you're going to have an action flick I, with guns, it kind of have to yeah, have the gun. Yeah, the gun thing. Because, like, if you've ever seen... You've seen John Wick, I imagine. And I want to say in that movie, there are certain points where they're not really firing weapons at all. Like, hmm. they just put it in post. Okay, there you go. With all the technology we have yeah, now, like yeah, now, they just put it in post. Yeah, so well, they're basically, then they're like finger pointing, going pew pew. Well, like, maybe for... And they, they had it in a real well, gun. Well, maybe for John Wick's character, those are real guns. But, like, the henchman who's over on the balcony shooting at him... Yeah, that makes That's not a real sense. gun. It's just him. Holding, another another point something. in case is, uh, if you've ever seen All Quiet on the Western Front, the newer one on Netflix, if you watch that, that movie, really, it's good. It's, it's all right. But the thing that pissed me off the most about it is everyone, almost everyone shooting a gun has no recoil. Oh, yeah. You got to have some realism. And in so, there. like, you're sitting there going, like, man, you know how big those calibers were back then? And those, and, you know, it's just, it really threw me off. I was like, yeah. all those, no one's getting any recoil on this. Do they even shoot guns on this, during filming? Like, yeah, it was, that was, that, that's. The first thing I noticed in that movie, I was like, "Oh." I mean, obviously, I feel sorry for the for the family of the director that was killed. I mean, that's the most yeah. important thing. But I also do feel sorry for that that young lady. Oh, think about Alec Baldwin, dude. Uh, like, yeah, he's he got to feel terrible. Yeah, he killed somebody, right? Um, but I, I just again, I, they, the, they got to feel terrible they, all they, the way around. Well, again, to close it out, this the talk about him is like it's interesting that he wasn't charged as the person pulling the trigger, but he's still being charged as the producer. So clearly, there's laws. That well, there's acts, probably deeper pockets in a production company. Well, I maybe. wonder. Oh, I don't really. That's what I'm saying. I, I wish we had a lawyer that could explain that to me. It's just because you know, there's there's the civil side of lawsuits, and then there, he's actually being charged for manslaughter, yes. and voluntary manslaughter. So this isn't like oh, the family's suing him. It was like oh, kind of like uh, the O.J. Simpson thing, where like he got he lost the civil court, but he didn't lose the actual going to jail court. So I think it's interesting. I, w- I wouldn't mind being explained, like, well, if he's the one to actually pull the trigger, why isn't he at least in some trouble? And yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I think that's an interesting thing, and I think it's even crazier that they're continuing on with the movie. I know. Uh, I think that's you know today. I think in the case of of the crow, I believe that scene was at the very very end of the movie, and so the movie was roughly complete. I don't know at what point. In the process of this well, see, movie, I, Rust. I, well, I which think is the what's film different movie, in that in that scenario, in this scenario, was Brandon Lee was the star of the film. Yes. And so they're like, okay, we kind of already shot everything; we can still release it. But the problem with this Rust movie is Alec Baldwin was, was the star of the film. Who was the one that did the shooting? It wasn't yeah, like just freak right. accident, like right. you know, because like uh, I think it was uh, when the newest Resident Evil movie came out. One of like the top end stunt drivers died, freak accident. But they still made the movie. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the, unfortunately, making movies is kind yeah. of a dangerous thing, especially the more high action. And I think there are injuries. And the Paul and Walker that, movie, same thing. Occur. The Paul Walker movie. Yeah, I think it's the nature in which this person was killed you know, with a gun, point blank. That I think is what changes it. If it had been someone who fell off the stage and happened to land in, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I think I think they should have just shut down the movie and just said, "Sorry, yeah, we're who's not going to make... touch this thing." That's what I'm saying. It's weird. It's probably China, but uh, they're behind everything. Well, they'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's probably a good place for us to take a break here. Yeah, what do you think, man? Ran through a couple of things. Yeah, there's a lot going on. 
And, you know, this is our second episode. There is. And we're, like I said, the, the reaction after the first episode was overwhelming. I got hundreds, if not thousands, of emails, yeah. well wishes. People just basically telling me, thank you for doing the show. It yeah. was, it well, was, the shower thoughts and yeah, you know, right. what, what to do when you go to a motel. Those, that's the information people need to know. It's true. All right, Audience One, we'll be back. With the little fame, a little change in the household name, but ain't too much change. We in the game, yo, but not to be vain. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. I'm labor ready, roll scholar for the dollar. Work for minds, pay me by the hour. We're not falling, we take it back to the days. Of Welcome back show. to Audience of One with We're Andrew and Dick. Episode number two. Yeah. They haven't kicked us out yet. I keep looking over my shoulder waiting for security to come in and drag me out by my collar. Well, we're not live, so we're recording. Yeah. So we have we can I have the mute button right here. Okay, that's good. We'll keep it Andrew's handy. off his meds. <laughs> keep, yeah, keep it handy. He's going Kanye on me. Yeah, keep or looking yay, over my shoulder. Or ye. Yeah, ye. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. Man, that might, be a, that might be a segment or a show in and of itself, that guy. I don't have anything on him but at this moment, but that, that could probably be a show. He needs to get his face digitally done. He needs to get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> Frontal lobotomy. Poor guy. I mean, in a way, I kind of feel sorry for him, too, but he, this, again... Sort of uh, the the bed I mean, he whatever. has made. It's whatever. It, you know, it reminds me though. It's like the, that kind of guy, Kanye West. He reminds me of those certain people in the world today. It's like I would love to get a tell-all book from like the assistant. Yeah, like the, the people who knows the inside of craziness like, of that guy. And not necessarily like a family member. I'm talking about just the assistant. It's like this guy was crazy to work for. Let me tell you how this worked. I'm sure they're out and, there. I well, wonder if they sign non-disclosures, though, for a certain length of time, and when those are up, that's when you get all the good stuff. Yeah, because it's something where they they deal with every little aspect of their life. They might see them in their most vulnerable spots. They might see them you know, when they're doing the cool, meeting celebrity spots, and then it's just kind of the wear and tear of humanity on yourself because you're human, and you're like, do I really have to work for this guy 365 days a year? They're so demanding. You know, I always wondered, like, you know, if you're Donald Trump's assistant or Joe Biden's assistant, like, they probably go, these guys are just crazy. Oh, well, yeah, I would assume that you got to be half nuts to want that yeah. that job to begin with. But, no, I think being a, a, an assistant to a celebrity. It's got to be something. Well, it's kind of like a, I watched that movie for the first time, Devil Wears Prada. And as I was watching it with my wife, my wife loves that book movie in the book or whatever. And I go, I don't really get this. It's like this lady's doing the typical sacrificing her life to get basically a referral from what I'm understanding. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. I have not. So it's based off the fashion world, and the main character is a – she wants to be a journalist or a writer. Okay. And so she's trying to look for a job to be an assistant at like some you know, newspaper or magazines, and she happens to get a job with this Vogue-type fashion magazine. And I guess – Meryl Streep's character is based off the CEO of Vogue, and she, you know she's very demanding. Has no, she's you know heart of ice. <laughs> and like at one point, I was like, if anyone treated me that way, and like, well, for example, to set up a scenario, she wanted the the main characters to get the manuscript to the next Harry Potter book, okay. which hasn't been published. And I'm like. Who really thinks to themselves, yeah, I'm going to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's kind of wild. But anyway, let's let's go back on track here. Uh, yeah, you, you were taking a tangent. Well, no, it's just funny. The assistant, the assistant world is funny to me because you you're always you an assistant to somebody. So it's like how much do you, time do you really take out of your own life to be an assistant, especially in the celebrity world? True. So, Well, we did have a pretty big event happen here. A lot of celebrities at the Super Bowl, dude. That's what I was saying, yeah. Yeah. That that was a pretty big event that just went on. I'm I'm assuming you watched at least some of it. I was working at the Bowling Alley, so I did see certain aspects of it. Like, I saw a little bit of the halftime show. I didn't hear any of it. I didn't really hear anything. Uh, There was a moment where I thought the Eagles were going to win, and then I went and did something 
and I come back and the game's over. And I'm like, how did the game end? <laughs> so I looked it up. I was like, oof, yeah. that sucks. Yeah. Well, I think the outside of the game, which was a pretty good game in and of itself. Yeah. The the big news was the uh, the, the halftime performance. Yeah. Oh, uh, and and in which case Rihanna performed like we discussed last week. And, and was her performance <coughs> the general like best of Rihanna? Well, the, I think I, that is typically what they try to do. And they being any artist that performs at the halftime show, they, they tries to get their. their it's like a mixtape. Yeah, their yeah, best. right. Yeah, they they say they've got ten number one hits. They're going to try and hit all of them. Do a minute and a half of each one or something yeah. like that. I I have to admit that um, there were a few songs that she was singing that I had never heard of, and I thought, are these some of her deeper tracks, or are these just, does this just show how, how out of touch I am? But now the, the big news, obviously, um, was the fact that, well, and, and how, how many seconds into the performance? I saw the very beginning. Did you? Like, literally you, when she's on top of the stadium. Yeah, the, the floating platform. Yeah. Did, did you go, I think she's pregnant. How many did did that thought ever cross your mind? Well, when you were she watching? looked odd. She looked a little, a little well, yeah. A little, so. The get up wasn't very flattering. So I'm sitting on the couch with my wife watching, and I think it hits us literally at the exact same time because we're watching. It might be thirty. Did people seconds. not know she was pregnant? No, so I have no idea no, about she had, that world. So, so so she had not announced it. So she wanted the she wanted the halftime Super Bowl. I show think this to be was her, her announcement. announcement. Yeah, which that's weird. It is a little strange, but um, how did she keep it clean? All like. Keep it under wraps. Well, she just had a baby in May. That's not that long ago. Right. And now she's already pregnant that again. That didn't surprise me. Eight months later. Well, she should have known. She she married a no, guy. I meant more of the belly showing. Well, well, but she That's... had a baby in May, and now she's pregnant again in February. And I'm thinking, well, she should have known her husband's name is ASAP. I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, well, things no, I mean, are going to happen quickly. I don't understand how the world didn't know. Did she not well, post I, a TikTok I, I forever? I don't know if she's... If she's performed since her last baby, I mean, after you have a baby, you yeah, typically true. take some time off, and this may have been her first performance back, but I think it was probably 30 seconds into so the performance. So she's probably the only performer who's ever been pregnant. Absolutely. I, I, I can't imagine I can't imagine Steven Tyler or Prince or anybody else who's been up there was pregnant during those performances. But my wife I, looked over at me, and I think it was probably the same time. She goes, I, I think she's pregnant. I Is she wonder pregnant? wonder how controlled the halftime show is and and in the perspective of the production. So w- I'm curious to see when she signed on to perform. Mm-hmm. And if she had to divulge, oh, I'm pregnant. And, you know, the NFL or whoever, like, the, the other people that are negotiating with, it's like, well, they may how not have, old they are you may gonna, or not how long? Have, I don't know. I, they may not have even known. I don't think anybody. Well, that'd be hilarious if the Goodell guy from the NFL is like, we didn't even know. No, I don't think they did, to we be honest know. with you. And really, is it any of their business? So we put a uh, pregnant lady, you know, 28 stories tall. There you go. Now you're bringing up another point that I was going to bring up. But, uh, yeah, I don't think anybody knew. That's fine. Um, and I don't think that's that's anybody's business, right? I mean, this, well, she can do whatever she wants. it kind of should be if you're now, the from safety a, guy. There working. you go. Now, from a legal standpoint and a safety standpoint, I did find it fairly interesting that she was up hoisted 60 feet up in the air on these platforms, which, by the way, looked amazing. The, the, yeah, they it was were, all cool. They were really, really cool. She did have a harness on. Yeah. To protect her in case she fell, but she's. I feel like if that platform went, she'd go with it. Oh, if the whole platform yeah. went? Well, I think it was attached to the platform. I think it was supposed to protect her from falling off. Oh, yeah, the if platform. she slipped or something. Yeah, if the whole platform went, that I think would she'd be go. wild. Yeah, it would have been wild. But it, it, all, all said and told, it was a fairly tame performance. Well, she's uh, pregnant. There you go. And I think that's, that's probably why. She couldn't do a full Rihanna like performance yeah. or anything like that. Uh, there were no wardrobe changes. She stayed in that same red outfit with all the yeah. the, 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 the the men dressed in white. Well, men and women dressed in white, gyrating and it's dancing fine. around them. I think there was some symbolism in there, all the with her I being pregnant know. and a bunch of white. I don't know. You uh, look, people look too deep into that. Well, I, I don't know, man. Well, it's fine. Her performance was fine. I think a lot of people were, were um, critical of it. Um, because there wasn't much to it, and she, there was some vulgarity where she's thrusting and, and you know, touching herself, which I could have done without. Okay. You know, pregnant or not, it's just kind of, that's just so overdone. I mean, maybe ASAP Rocky's into that. Well, he might be. Yeah. They, 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 that doesn't mean they got to bring it to the, to that's the funny. Super Bowl uh, halftime. Well, I mean, the Super Bowl has so much controversy in it every year, I feel like, in one way or another. Yeah, I mean, you can take that all the way back to the uh, Super Bowl with Janet Jackson. Yeah. 
Uh, did, you, did you watch that one? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. That? I remember watching I watched it, it live. It was, it was, it and was I'm like not a, gonna lie, this was. I think this is before HD. It, and yeah, for the most, part, I think that was 2000. I remember when it happened. I couldn't really tell what I was looking at. I think it was 2003. I saw. I, it was like my JFK moment, man. I, I knew exactly where I was. But I couldn't tell what it, it was. Happens. <laughs> like I remember looking. I was like, "Is that her? Yeah. Is it? Like, what is that?" Well, because it had like this ring. Like yeah, a, like she a, had it. She it was like, decorated. I mean, it was big. Yeah, it was, yeah. I was like, oh, like, like the earring sun. was big. It was like a sun or something. So it was one of those remember. things. I was like, oh, it's whatever. Yeah, and then I, mean, I think the next day, it was like, oh, she showed her her. She bared her breast. I was like, she did. Yeah, I, I thought I, it was like a tattoo or like a thing she had on on the costume. Well, they like, cut away so quickly yeah. too. It was like I didn't. It didn't register for me either. Yeah. And but yeah, I I I remember it very clearly, but. That was obviously, I think, from that point forward, they have been very, very. Well, so uh, that's I'm surprised. It's like, well, does she notify them? Hey, I'm pregnant. I don't think that she. I mean, no. I'm going to say no. I, I obviously yeah. have no insider information. I think there was one year too no. where they were like, because Pepsi's been sponsoring it for I don't know how long, but there was a talk of I think it was when Coldplay. It was when Coldplay played, and the person who was supposed to be there backed out because I think the NFL was telling the performer that they had to pay to do it they were trying something different where they were putting up for auction like if you want to perform at the this sounds vaguely familiar and i i wouldn't put it past them because i think in the past they have done it for free the performers don't get paid for the halftime performances they they benefit from all of the residual uh, attention yeah. and, and sales that they get from after after they perform. So I think most people. Well, do it I'm for saying free. I think they so had to pay to, for the performance. So like, I think they've gotten it to where they go. Oh, now people know it's such a windfall that they can actually charge for it. That wouldn't surprise me. I don't. Well, yeah, know. I think it was more the. I think but. the logic was they didn't want to have any control over the performance itself, and they got tired of bands saying, "Oh, this is what we want. This is what we want." It's like, all right, how about you just take over the production of it, and you know, we'll charge you for you know, a slot and then you, you pay for everything else. Like you pay for the fireworks, you pay for the, like, hmm. the stage because they didn't, you know, the NFL's not into stages, you know? Right. So I don't, yeah. I, I mean, to me, the Super Bowl's cool. I like the game, the controversial claw at the end. I think that's funny. I think it's uh, one of those things that, you know, unfortunately that, you know, that, that player is going to be hitting his head against the wall until the next season starts because he yeah so i don't know that we need to get into the x's and o's of the game itself overall it was a great game yeah it was it was close unfortunately marred by some controversial calls but you 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 bring up an interesting point and and i think this this can be said in just the super bowl or any game but especially in the super bowl is do you call a foul or a penalty yeah in the last seconds of a close game especially with so much on on the line and I always say yes, because I've heard people say, man, you just can't make that call there. You just can't. Look at how, it, was it a penalty by, to the letter of the law? Yes, it was a hold. We're oh, talking, I have no idea. We're talking about a defensive hold here at the very end on, on Smith-Schuster. And, and was it technically? Yes. But I've heard people say you just can't make that call at that point in the game because it changes the outcome of the game. And I think, well. What's the point of having rules? Exactly. Though? You can't have a separate set of rules for the first 58 minutes of the game in the last two we're going to change it. We're going to suddenly be a lot looser and then change it even further when you say, well, it's the Super Bowl. So I think it was the right call to make. It is just unfortunate that it happened at that point. For me, the, the biggest thing that stood out, because I think, I think Kansas City still wins the game even if they, they don't have that penalty. I really I think their, their defense would have been good enough. You know, they kick a field goal. They would have held them with some time left. The biggest thing that stood out to me uh, was the running back McKinnon. I think that's his okay. name, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, McKinnon. He had the uh, the option to run into the end zone with probably about a minute left. They handed the ball off to him. He runs around. Uh, uh, Jarek McKinnon. He runs around, and he's got a clear path to the end zone. He runs right up to the end zone and stops. He doesn't score. He he easily, un- untouched, he easily could yeah, have gotten and in. And he steps out of bounds. No, no, he just took a knee. Okay. Took a knee. And the whole concept there was to take more time off the clock. So we're just going to milk the clock down to where there's no time left, kick a field goal. That way, Philadelphia either has no chance to get the ball back, or when they do, they have no time left, which is what ended up happening. But to me, if I'm an NFL player, I dream about scoring touchdowns, especially dream about scoring a touchdown on the biggest stage, which is the Super Bowl. The, The restraint, the discipline that this guy had 
to take that into mind, because I'm sure they talked about it in, in the halftime, or not halftime, in the huddle and said, hey, we're milking the clock. Run out of bounds. Don't, don't, because as soon as he scores that touchdown, the time is going to stop. The clock, the yeah. play clock stops. Don't, and we're milking the clock. Now, he had that clear line and still had the thought and the clarity of mind to take a knee. I don't think I could have done that. I would have said, you know, coach, I know that you, we talked about this. I'm running in. I'm doing my, my end zone dance. This is this is yeah. my opportunity. So I think that was some something that stood out to me is I've I've never I've never seen that much. I mean, actually, I'm actually I'm not gonna lie. I, that's, biggest stage. that's an aspect of football I really don't like. What aspect is that? Where like you you basically know the rules of the game and you manipulate the rules to where like you wouldn't make the normal decision. Oh well, that, yeah, and you can do that in any sport. I think. Well, I'm not, not any any well, sport with a time a clock. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when 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 teams take a knee, and it's just like it's so funny to me. They haven't gotten to the point where it's like, all right, well, clearly they're gonna run the clock. Let's just end the game. Like, well, no, let's watch this for another minute, and like <laughs> you have to go through the formality of the yeah, quarterback like, taking a knee. Yeah, it is. Football does that probably yeah, more than any it, other sport. Yeah, and it happens often. Well, the, the the clock is an element of the game, and how well, no, you I, manage the clock yeah. is a big is a big element. And I, I know coaches some are better at it than others because it really is a coaching thing. The players out there on the field, a lot of times, aren't thinking the clock. The quarterback has to think about it a little bit more. So this really is a coaching decision. And yeah. I know that. Well, I mean, there's another. What's that rule where uh, you know you're doing a punt return? I think it's like you can step out of bounds, and it it counts like if you touch the ball from out of bounds. It's considered that's where the ball's down. Yeah, if you're talking about where the ball goes out of bounds, that's where it's considered out. Yeah, I think, well, I think no, I'm it, understanding you. No, it's like the the defensive player watches the ball, and they can be out of bounds, and then they touch the ball from oh, I inbound. Don't, like they go they go from out of bounds into bounds. And no, it's, I don't, it's some weird rule. Yeah, no, I don't think if you if you go out of bounds, I don't think you're allowed to come back in and be an eligible player. Or if you do, you have to reestablish. That's what it is. You have to reestablish yourself yeah. as a player, which means you have to have – taken x number of steps back on the playing field during the clock. Well, yeah, where football sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. It's terrible. Well, you know, no one's watching. Let me ask you this. Uh do you think the commercial stuff is is it losing its momentum? So, I said that last week that I thought generally speaking the commercials over time aren't as good as they used to be. Uh, I thought this year they were fine. They were yeah, they were special. Yeah, there was no Yeah, and they were about like they have been over over the last several years and they, they were fine. Nothing really stood out to me. I think the only time the commercial I would say I look forward to is you know when they do the movie stuff, because usually like they put really good movie trailers out where it's That's like finally funny. we get like a good movie. And then I I didn't I, like those the least because well, I no, can see those anytime. No, I meant more for like I want funny. For, Show well, me the no, funny. I meant more for the spectacle. It's like hey, we're gonna release a trailer, but you know what? The Super Bowl's coming out. We're gonna release it on the Super Bowl. So I think that works if you've got a movie that's very, very anticipated, like the next Star Wars or something, and yeah. people are waiting, well, that's anticipating. That's the only time. But I if could it's just see a, it. a movie that I'd never even heard of and it's coming out and they show the trailer, I'm like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. Show me the funny. I want funny. I think the one that stood out for me though, I, I said earlier that I didn't think any of them did, but the one I think was a is an older man dancing in front of some fountains, and I think it was for TurboTax. Yeah. And there were no words said. He just had some headphones on, and this older guy, he appeared to be older, just dancing in front of some fountains. I giggled. I laughed. I'm like, that's funny. That was it. And it just said something like, "Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes." And that was it. And he's just dancing because I guess the idea there is someone else is doing his taxes for him. He's just out there enjoying himself and dancing in front of some fountains. All right, fair enough. That one that was funny. I think there was the uh, the one with uh, uh, Bradley Cooper and his mom. Uh, they were trying, yeah, yeah, that was kind of funny. The interaction between him and his mom, I think, was pretty pretty funny. She's an interesting character. Uh, she had some, some funny glasses on, dressed kind of funny. I, you know, I, Assuming that was his real mom, I'm yeah. guessing that it was. And then I think there was the... Um, the uh, Will Will Ferrell commercial for the uh, GM uh, electric vehicle. It was basically like a small movie with zombies. That was pretty funny. I don't know if you saw that one. No. Or not. Yeah. I, I didn't really see any commercials. I think the only commercial that was brought up on another show was with the announcement for that MGM thing in Las Vegas, the Sphere Amphitheater. Because hmm. a lot of people were confused about the U2, the band U2 was in it. Mm-hmm. And it's like a baby talking from a sphere. and People didn't really know what it, the commercial was all about. Oh, I don't know if I saw that one. I must have missed that one. But apparently, it's, I was like, well, it's probably, you look at the bottom, and they're in uh, Las Vegas, they built this sphere amphitheater. It's like it's just a perfect circle, a perfect sphere. Huh. Okay. And they're, they're opening cool. it with U2. So U2 is going to be the first band to, per, to perform there. 
Do you remember a few years ago, the, the big hubbub, speaking of U2, where they actually put one of their songs into everybody's Apple? Oh, yeah. Gosh, that was funny. So they, I guess they thought they were doing something good and offered a free song to everyone. So everybody who has I think it was the Apple, album. Was it the whole album? I thought it was I just one was song. Album. Regardless, one song or album, they thought that they were just going to be received so well. Yeah. It was so funny. And the backlash they got, like... What are you doing putting this stuff well, in my that, playlist? No, Get well, this out of I didn't order this. Yeah, I think what <laughs> so I, I I personally was affected by that because for some reason, whenever like I would reset my my iPod, it would always refer back to that song. Oh, I bet that was somewhere in the algorithm. That, so that was, it was be like, the first I don't song play in the this. shuffle. That wanna, may have been part of the problem. Yeah, too. like I don't want to play this song. Like I want to remove it. And uh, yeah, exactly. And maybe you couldn't remove it for X number of days. I don't remember, but boy, that yeah. backfired on them so bad. And they thought no one can be possibly mad at this. We're giving them music for free. <laughs> like, we don't uh, even want your music. I'm not a big U2 fan. I mean, I got a couple of hits, but I'm just, I know some people are so into them. It's not for me. But yeah, I mean, it was a busy weekend with the the Super Bowl. It was. Did, oh, did you see that this was the first time that four women had, had flown the jets over the, the fly over the game? It was four women pilots, and it, one of them was from uh, Texas. Okay. Yeah, man. So, so I always feel like that kind cool. of move is a dangerous move. Flying jets or having... Well, because like if you make a point of it, of like we're doing this because we made this diversity choice or like we were trying to prop it up, but like that could backfire horribly where like say something bad happened. Oh, no. And then okay. like everyone's going to be talking about it because four women were involved. You know, I, that kind of crap. Yeah, no, so I it's get like, it. Yeah, it's kind of like, gonna... why would you want to promote that? Like, if anything goes bad, you're, you're setting it backwards now. I think, yeah. I so think... it's like, it's not really, a, why even say it? Why well, even say it? Because it? it is a big deal, I well, suppose. Well, is there only four women in the Navy or something? No, like, no I think it was the first time that four, in the Air Force? All four women pilots flew over uh, a Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, but... do we know the other pilots on the past years? Well, if something bad had happened, I don't think it would have. I think it would have been a big deal, no matter what, if they were male or female. Well, well no, I'm way, saying. No, but what I'm way. trying to tell you is, like, you you see these promotions. Well, it wasn't really promoted. Well, I guess after. It was, no, it it I remember this because they said it on television. Yeah. It's like oh, during the, the fact. Yeah, like this is the first time. I'm like, man, if something bad goes, like no one's gonna <laughs> let this down. Yeah. Like no one can let this down, and it's kind of like, uh, especially in the entertainment industry. Like I remember, uh, remember that movie Bros. And you see, I don't know if you've heard of Bros. It has Billy Eichner in it? No. And he's a comedian. And he does like Billy on the Street and stuff like that. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But it was like one of the first bigger production gay movies. And then, but they kept emphasizing it was gay, and then it didn't do well. And so the promotion of it backfired on I them. Got you. I actually saw that movie in the lineup on the the, the plane that I took yeah. last week. It was one and of the movie choices. And I bet it's I never, a good I, movie. I just, but when you said that, I'm like, wait, I just saw when you When you try to sell goods on, I would call it like a diversity thing. It's like you're going to – people aren't going to forget. And it's like, okay, now we're just going to make fun of this movie because of how hard you sold it on this idea. But, yeah, the four women thing, I don't really – I still don't get it. Like can you imagine being part of a company is like, hey, we got to do a promotion like this. And someone goes, why don't we get four women to fly over the Super Bowl – and they're like, okay, let's. They don't even check to make sure this hasn't already happened. And I can totally see the Air Force like, yeah, it's already happened. It happened like in like 1992, but we didn't really make a big deal of it then. It just that's who well, we picked. The the one thing I did here was the 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 footage that they showed from inside the cockpit while they were flying yeah. was actually pre-recorded. That was not right then at the time when they were flying over. They had flown over earlier in the day and they recorded it and showed it. And I know there's a big hubbub about that. And I'm like, I don't care, fool me, I don't care. Yeah, I mean. I don't know why we need jets flying over that stadium anyway. Well, because we've got to flex our muscles right now. We got balloons all again, over the place. We got to make again, sure that we can show. Again, it look makes what we've got. If something bad goes, if something bad happens, it makes us look even more ridiculous. So, like, imagine they fly over, and then there's actually a, an aerial threat in the area, and they don't do anything about it. It's like, well, why were you there in the first place? <laughs> so it's like, oh, we actually didn't arm the missiles before we took off. We don't actually have any firepower on these jets. Yeah. I can totally see that. I could totally, it's like, oh, the closest jets are the jets that flew. No, they're actually not armed. (laughs) So, like, we got to get other ones out there. Yeah, and no balloons landed during halftime. Like, I thought there might be some aliens. Dang, I was really disappointed. That's why I was really watching. See if one of them suckers came down. Well, I think think, uh, there was a game. uh, I think it was a hockey game. Someone flew, like, blew up a white balloon. It says this this isn't a spying camera or something like that and flew it around the 
the hockey rink. But <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That's but yeah, funny. the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's one of those things that it's so ingrained in our culture. It's it's kind of becoming a parody of itself in a way. It's, uh, the only thing that's been saving it, in my opinion, is the actual good football games. There have been a couple good ones. So it's been like it's not just a blowout, and it's not, and you have two great teams. So it's not like a fluke happened. Right. Like I mean, like. What I love is they always do at these games where you have one guy partially injured. And Par- so you, partially injured? Well, you know, the Mahomes thing. Oh, Where right. it's like, oh, yeah, oh we don't know if he's injured or not. Is he really injured? We don't really know. But he's such a, you know, such a trooper going out there. Because can you imagine being the second in command, like the second quarterback, and just going like, no one even likes me. <laughs> like they're playing this guy limping. And like they won't even consider putting me in. You, you know when everybody likes the backup quarterback? When the starting quarterback is terrible, then all of a sudden, everybody's got to put so and so in, man. He's looking, he, he would do better than this guy. Everybody loves the yeah, backup well, that's quarterback. What I'm saying, when like, the- it's it's so funny that the conversation you know, Mahomes is like, Yeah, I can play, I can play. He's like, Yeah, but if you get hit in your leg again, you probably can't play ever again. Well, no, I got, we cannot trust Jody here. Joe, Jody cannot go in. For, Why do we even have him on the roster? Yeah, like, I, I'm telling you, because when Somebody's I watched, gotta hold the clipboard. I forgot what the game was, the game before that. I actually watched that game when the Chiefs played. It was either the Bills or they played, uh, who did the Chiefs play to go to the Super Bowl? Cincinnati. Cincinnati, okay. And I remember watching, like, they show him. He's like, Ugh. Oh, yeah, I thought he was done, man. Yeah, and I was like, is this all for show? Like no, just, and they showed that replay. It looked like that ankle was snapped. Well, I yeah, it was broken. Oh, I know. But then, like, when he didn't go out, he yeah. went out for a little bit and then came back on. And yeah. I'm like, and then he got hurt again early on in the Super Bowl. Same type play, yeah. ankle turn. It wasn't much, but when you're already injured, yeah, that's I, thought, what I'm I thought, oh, uh, this is done. I hate those kind of things. He limped around the whole game, and they didn't trust st- whoever the backup was at all. No, no, they didn't. But no, it was a great game. Glad I watched. Yeah. So. So sorry for all those Eagles fans. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I feel terrible. <laughs> you know, Nick Sirianni, the coach of the Eagles, was crying uh, beforehand during the national anthem. and uh, boy, Powerful. Yeah, I it know. It's Chris Stapleton. So it, they, oh, I mean. by the way, he, he rocked it. I, I think I, if I, I identify as Chris Stapleton, I think. Yeah. I, he sounds the way I wish I could sing. Oh, my gosh, that was an awesome rendition. I, I don't know that I was brought to tears, but it was excellent. I'm just glad that Nick Sirianni was caught on camera crying because the memes afterwards, oh yeah, delicious. Delicious. Love it. But that may have been one of my favorite. Um, I mean, I think the all-time best um, was, is Whitney Houston. Yeah. That She she rocked it with the, with the Star Spangled Banner. Or the, uh, I don't really remember that. I don't really remember those things. Like, Oh, uh, but hers has been played over and over and over again. That's that's number one. Oh, okay. But Stapleton, man, that was that was excellent. Because he's got this, he's this country artist, big yeah, burly did. with the beard, but he's got this blues. Well, he almost seems like he didn't really want to him, be man. there. Uh, I think that's just his demeanor. Though. Oh, he doesn't want to be anywhere. He's probably. Like, oh, you want me to play the guitar? You didn't tell me that. But uh, all right, yeah, just give this, me a guitar. This bluesy, smoky soul yeah. voice, but then he kind of mixed in a little bit of country and western with it. That guy is that guy's awesome. Okay. So, but anyways, well, do you want to you want to end episode number two right yeah, here, man? Yeah, episode number two. I guess what we we we, we need to tell people is we're uh, getting some guests lined up. So keep we an are eye out. Exciting and, stuff. Uh, pay attention to our social media on YouTube, Facebook. It is the audience of one show with Andrew and Dick, and also uh, live on the radio. We're on podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts. Supposedly, supposedly on Apple. I loaded podcast. it on there. I think they're still they're they're doing a background check on me before they uh, make sure. Yeah, true. I and have not gotten any notifications. We gotta get on Spotify. On Spotify's you know. I did load the the, the feed. Let's put it that way. That's good. They That's said, good. They, they said we're we're evaluating. <laughs> and uh, we will get the webpage up pretty soon. It's gonna be irlonestar.com slash a o o. It's an audience of one. Yep. So. And if you happen to be here local in the area, we're live on the air, 10 a.m., 106.1 and 104.5. Irlonestar.com. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next episode. And uh, have a good week, Andrew. Absolutely. It's good to you see too. you. It's great. It's always great to see you. Till next time. Design with having National Geographic, the magic with tailor-made status and plus flavor. That's all that matters.